Hi, my name's Paul Grogan and welcome to episode 32 of the Gaming Rules podcast, where I talk about the games that I've been playing and various other things that I've been up to. I've also got an interview in this episode with Richard Denning, who is one of the men behind the UK Games Expo. For those who don't know, UK Games Expo is the big gaming event held in the UK, and it's on its 10th year this year. So I've got Richard on the show later on to talk about it. If you want to engage with me, the best place is on the BGG Guild, which is number 2258. I'm also on Twitter at Gaming Rules Vids, Facebook, Gaming Rules Videos. And if you're listening to this podcast on YouTube, then I do reply to every comment that's made on there, whether it's good or bad. Thanks as always to the sponsors of the show, GamesLaw, the UK's largest specialist games retailer at GamesLaw.com. Gaming Rules News. So I'm going to mix things up a little bit for this episode and first of all talk about the things that I've been working on. The Tolkien video, uh, I know I say this every week but it is still going on. I am hoping to get the majority of the filming done this week, so hopefully a couple of weeks, although I probably said that last time. The other things that I've been working on apart from the game development, I've been working on some rule books for Portal Games and Ludic Creations and helping them out with various other things. I've also done a, another review video. Now I've only done two review videos before because I try to keep my tutorial videos and review videos, they are separate things, but I finally got around to doing my third review video and that is for Discoveries, which is the Lewis and Clark dice game as some people say, and that video is up on YouTube now. Some of you may have also seen the video that I uploaded at the very start of April. If you haven't seen it yet, you need to go and check that out. The game is called Ice Fisher, and I won't say too much more about it, but please go onto the YouTube channel and check out the video. One of the other things that I've been up to recently is I attended Bacon. Now, Bacon is an event in the UK that this year had its 30th anniversary. Bacon is one of my favourite events in the UK every year because it's really friendly atmosphere. I know lots of the people that go there because I've been going for many years and also it's just down the road. It's actually in Exeter so it only takes me about 20 minutes to get there uh, and as such I can come back every night and sleep in my own bed which is always nice. Bacon for me, like most years, was primarily working. I was doing demo work for CGE. Um, one of the games that I took there, which I wasn't really allowed to tell anybody about because it was top secret, well, that is currently, as I'm recording this, over in America at the Gathering of Friends. And various bits of news have now come out about the game. So, I think I am allowed to actually say something about it. And that is, it's a new game in the Codenames brand of games. And it's Codenames Pictures. It's basically Codenames, but with pictures. Now, I know lots of people have been doing this before, because Dixit Codenames was talked about as soon as Codenames came out, but Vlogger did actually have this idea beforehand anyway, so it was sort of already part of the plan. Um, the pictures are nowhere near as abstract as Dixit. They are fairly simple pictures, but a lot of the pictures are, they have multiple meanings. So for example, there'll be um, a pig with a hole in the top as if it's like a piggy bank. There'll be a coin going into it and the pig's got wings. So that picture alone could mean all sorts of different things. And I personally find it easier to make connections between the words in the game. Anyway, that was one of the things I got up to at Bacon. Uh, I was also demoing and teaching a few other people various other games, and I did get a chance to play a few games myself. I also ran a Prodigals Club tournament, of which we got 12 people entered, which was, which was good. And uh, John Humphreys uh, was the biggest loser and managed to uh, win the first game, get through to the final, and then win in the final, which was a very tight game. The last thing I wanted to mention is, uh, going back to UK Games Expo, I'm actually going to be working at that event for CGE, but I will have my gaming rules hat on at 11 o'clock on the Friday when I'm in a seminar. Now, the hall's open at 11 o'clock on the Friday, so I don't think it's really the best time for a seminar, but if you want to avoid the rush of everybody going into the exhibitors halls early, and to be fair, I don't think there's any reason why you need to go in early because there's no, there's no exclusive promos that anybody's giving away as far as I know, then please come along to the seminar that I'm doing at 11 o'clock on the Friday. Now, it's not just me. There's Ricky Royal from Box of Delights. There's Efka Andy Lane from the No Pun Included show and John Perkins from Actual LOL. We're going to discuss 
making videos, what inspired us to start our own YouTube channels, things we've learned along the way and various other things. Um, and we're also talking a little bit about the difference between rules videos and instructional videos and playthrough videos. So yes, that's 11 o'clock on the Friday in the seminar rooms. So if you are interested in coming along then, then please book a space for that. What Paul has played. So, things that I've been playing in the last couple of weeks. Um, in no particular order, I played a game of Bruges by Stefan Feld. Now, I played this game because there's a game that I'm working on at the moment, uh, which is in development, which has a couple of mechanics that are similar to Bruges. So that made me go and get out Bruges, start looking through it again, and then thought, actually, I do want to play this game. Because the first couple of times I played it, um, Bruges got really, really great reviews and was generally regarded as a great game. And I played it and I was like, well, it's nice, but I wouldn't have classed it as great. But I wanted to go back to it again, and we played it, and I really enjoyed it. It, it is a good game. As I say, I wouldn't class it as a great game, but I did really enjoy it. It was, however, the harshest game of Bruges that I've ever played. Now, for those people who don't know, at the start of the turn, you roll the five dice, and they will decide basically how valuable the different actions are in the game. So it's got dice in it, but the dice affect everybody. Now for every five and six that is rolled, then all players get affected by one of these, these bad events that can happen in the game. Uh, so there's five dice, each of five different colors, and as I say, if a, if a five or six gets rolled on the red dice, for example, then everybody gets one of these fire markers. And if you get three fire markers, then you have a fire and you lose a building and the amount of fives and sixes that were coming out in the game. So it affected everybody the same, but that, combined with a couple of other cards that came out early, we were like, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll build a building. Right, it's burned down. Oh, I'll build another building and put a person in it. Okay, the person died. It was really, really difficult to actually get going in the game, but it worked. There was nothing wrong with the game. It was just, it was just a very harsh game. Uh, after that, I got uh, another game that I haven't played for ages, which was Perudo. Now, Perudo is one of those games which a lot of people think I don't like because it's got dice in it, it's a bit of a party game, sort of in inverted commas, but I really do like Perudo. I like the, 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 the bluffing element and the bidding element, and I just think it, it plays really nicely. I did win as well. I'm, I'm relatively good at the game, considering that I'm not generally good at bluffing. So that was a good game to play. Uh, I've also played another game of Small City. Now, I think this is my fourth or fifth game of it, although a few of the other games that I've played of it, I got a fairly big rule wrong, which did affect how the game played. So I played this with uh, three players, teaching two other people how to play. I do enjoy Small City. It is pretty heavy. There's a lot of fiddly rules in there, but if you like that kind of thing, then then, then it's good. Uh, we did use an alternative rule for the parks, because I, I personally believe the parks are just a little bit too good. I'll try and avoid using the word broken, but it seems a bit too easy to get parks because what parks do in the game is they reduce the pollution that you produce, fair enough. But every point of pollution in this game is a victory point that you lose at the end of the game. So if you build a size three park, for example, not only are you reducing your pollution output by three a turn, that's basically three victory points every turn. So the parks seem a really easy way of getting uh, getting victory points. Anyway, uh, La Grania, which was another game that, uh, that I haven't played for ages, and that hit the table last Friday. Really, really do like La Granja. Medium to heavy sort of game, I think, with everything that's going on it. Lots of different routes to victory, and it's got it's, it combines various elements from various Euro games, which, which I really like. Uh, if you haven't played La Granja or know anything about it, then check out my YouTube channel, because La Granja was the first review video that I did. But, spoiler, I really like the game, so there you go. And finally, Bonanza. Continuing the series of games that I haven't played for ages, Bonanza, I've not played probably about five years or so, and there was six of us at the end of the night, and we needed an hour's game for six people. Went upstairs to the games room, brought down a few selections, Bonanza was the one that everybody chose. Bonanza, Uwe Rosenberg's, I don't, I don't think it was his first game, but it certainly came out a long time before all of the big ones that he's now known for. And it's about farming. Surprise, surprise. But it's, it's a card game. Uh, it's a fairly simple rules card game where you're trading with the other players for the beans and planting the beans in your field to get money. But 
it's quite clever in the way that the trading works and everything else. So I really like Bonanza and it was good to play that again, having not played that for a long time. Special guest. So joining me on the show this week as a special guest, I've got Richard Denning. Now, Richard is the main guy behind the UK Games Expo. So a lot of you people in the UK will have probably heard of Richard. Those listeners who are not in the UK uh, probably won't have heard of who Richard is and may not have even heard of the UK Games Expo. But this is your chance to find out what it's all about. So welcome to the show, Richard. Hi, hello there. Thanks for coming on the show and giving up your time. I know things are very busy because UK Games Expo is just around the corner. I mean, start of June, two months away, but... With all of the planning that you've got to do, I'm guessing things are quite frantic. Oh yes, yeah. I mean, the planning starts way back. Uh, I should just say, by the way, that I'm one of the two main guys because right. the other guy gets really annoyed with anyone else. <laughs> <laughs> I do all the all these interviews, and uh, quite a lot of the time, it's, it's only ever mentions me. Okay. And he looks at them or listens to them, or whatever, and he says, "Why would I ever mention? <laughs> why, 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 why?" And, and somehow he always gets uh, thought of as the the guy that does a bit of the IT. Right. Okay. Um, whereas like, Tony, you know, Tony yes. Hyams, the other chap, is very, very, very heavily involved. The show would really not happen without tony as well because he does all of the um the uh, it is the it side of the show it has to be it has to be said but everything when you get to show the size that we are now there's so much administration and so many systems that have to be in place in order for it to happen so it's fair to say that it, it's sort of 50 50 joint main responsibility yeah very much yeah so going back 10 years because this year is the 10th year of uk games expo it is yes yeah let's go back let's go back 10 years why did you start? And this was something you thought of with Tony. Yep. Uh, well, actually, Tony wasn't involved the very oh, right. first okay. year. <laughs> uh, the very first year, there was there was um, three of us. A guy that's not no longer involved who had gone to sort of other things, uh, and um, and Patrick Campbell, who who some people actually think he's me a lot of the time because right. he's often out there talking to loads of people, and he's he gets referred to quite often as the main man. We uh, we, we talk to him about of that because some trader said to him, "Yeah, I've been talking to the main man," and Tony and I look at each other and say. <laughs> <laughs> he's not to talk to me. He's not to talk to you. Is he must, talking must to? Must be part then. <laughs> and it's part. So, but anyway, but two of the three of us were in, were were the original guys. Yeah, and we we sort of um, had the had the original thought yeah. for the show. Tony actually came in about six months later when we needed somebody to set up a, a ticketing system right. for us. Okay. Uh, so what was it then? Ten ten years ago or eleven years ago? What what made you think? Let's organise a big event in the UK because it's it's different from a lot of other conventions. So yeah, what was the initial spark, the initial idea? Well, we I mean I comes from from a background and originally mainly war more war gamey sort of orientated. So I've been used to lots of war games um shows in the UK. Um the Salute and Triples and other ones like that, which are quite large uh, war games, you know, um, conventions or, or, or shows. Um but I wasn't really aware of many um, board game and role playing events um, of the size of things like I'd heard of, like Essen Spiel and and, and Gen Con Indy. Right. You know, I, I knew there was a Gen Con UK, but uh, but but at that at that time it was mainly focused on role playing, really, um, and very much from the sort of perspective perhaps of the you know, the hardcore role player, yeah, um, rather than a mainstream show. Um, and it didn't seem to have a lot of board games, and the board game conventions that existed were primarily. Um, um, 200 guys get together to play games with each other for a weekend yeah um but there wasn't hardly ever any any trade element or or, yeah. or publishers there at all but there wasn't so there wasn't the show like Essence spiel or gen con where the publishers go to and they they show their games mm -hmm. and and we um and we thought well, obviously we said why not right <laughs> why, okay. why shouldn't shouldn't there be you know something like that in the uk yeah. so it's because there wasn't really a show as you say i mean i go to three or four of these board game conventions every year and they're great and i love them but it is yeah. effectively we've hired a venue 200 people turn up play games and there's a guy in the corner selling them and that's yeah. it there's yeah. no that's it. it's not yeah. really a show you no, know there's no, no, no exhibitors there there's no official demo area there's no nothing like that I mean, those are those are great weekends. I mean, I certainly go to them when I can, and it's good to it's a good chance to play games, isn't it? Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. They're great. But I thought there was there was a need for something more than that, right. so, or different anyway. Okay. Um, so we went to we actually ran a little show that's um, what well, was called Game um, in, in in Birmingham in the two thousand and six with um, um, 
couple of other guys who wanted mainly to run a uh, organised play orientated show. Mm -hmm. So lots of competitions, tournaments, that sort of thing. Uh, and in fact, the chat of the brand game went and went and um, um, moved it to, to Manchester the following couple of years and carried on with that sort of format of show. Whereas we fancied continuing with something in the in, in Birmingham, but basically just because we lived here, it was just easiest because <laughs> you know you've got to go into these convention halls multiple times of the year to, to plan it all out. Yeah. And you know it's just easiest to do it that way. Uh, so a lot of people say, why not London? And that's, that's basically why not London, because we're Midlands-based. Um, but we we sort of went then to... So then we thought, well, where do we start to get these board game publishers from? You know, I was aware that there were British board game publishers and, for that matter, role-playing companies and other things in the UK. Uh, uh, but... You know, where how would you get them to come to something? And the obvious thing was to make a trip to Essen, yeah. you know, to go to Essen Spiel, where all these guys were going to every year and showing all their games, but they weren't doing it anywhere in the UK. Yeah. Um, so and we we went along in 2006, the autumn, and literally hauled ourselves round Essen for four days, <laughs> just talking to anybody that would listen to us. And we had a lot of people who really just thought, no, that's not going to work. It would never work in the UK. Just yep. you know, go away. And I remember one or two companies saying, "You go come back when we when you've got to about 10,000 attendants." Okay. Um, so so if we do hit that this year, I might I might go back to them. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we you know we 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 started and we were lucky because we did manage to get several companies on board right from the off you know um people like surprise stare yep. uh, and ragman brothers um to, to name a couple um of the british publishers who um and then several of the retailers that came on right from the start um and that gave us our our initial you know um starting point yeah really. so skip forward 10 years here we are yep. in a couple of months time we've got the 10th year of UK Games Expo, which for those people that don't know is, uh, I think it's fair to say it's the, probably the UK's premier gaming event, not just based on numbers, but based on everything that goes on there. Um, I mean, I certainly tell everybody in the UK that you have to go to the UK Games Expo. And I'm not, I'm not telling them that, you know, deliberately to just promote the event and make you happy. I'm telling them that because there is something for everybody. You mentioned the War Games convention, uh, the War Games shows. I've been to a yeah. few of them in the past. You've got Colours and Salute mm. and things like that, and they're great. You've got mm. something for everybody if you're into war games. You know, you've got exhibitors, traders, demo games and everything. Then you've got your role-playing events that are going on every weekend somewhere in the UK. Yes. It's great for the role yeah. players. You've got your collectible card game uh, tournaments going on all over the UK all of the time. And then you've got the board games. UK Games Expo's got everything. It's got, you know, you'll find all of those different people under one roof, combined also with various seminars, uh, lots of media people, people dressing up as Daleks and going around the corridors saying exterminate. Mm. It's, just, it's just got everything. If you're into any form of gaming whatsoever, UK Games Expo is just an amazing three days, as far as, far as I'm concerned. So there we go. I was going to ask you to tell people a little about it. And well, I, and I, it, I've, probably <laughs> just, I've probably done that. But is there anything I've missed? Is that, is that pretty much it? Yeah, it's that exactly what you say. It was always an attempt to try and get something that would appeal to anyone that's in the gaming world at all, um, you know, because that would hopefully got them covered. Uh, we always know there's areas that we could improve on, you know, but we hopefully have got their bits done, and also the mainstream to try and get the the public in and get the families in and get them playing stuff as well. Yeah, because there, um, there is quite a you know. bit of a. Uh, th there is a, a lot of family support as well, which is not something I, I make use of myself, but I know other people that have gone with their kids and yep. said they've had a thoroughly good time as well. So it's definitely family friendly. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. It's very much the intention. We have a whole area that have the family zone, which is uh, intended to. I mean, some families go in there and spend the whole weekend in there. Yeah. <laughs> so they all, you know, they'll come for a day and then they'll come back the next year and say, we're coming for the weekend and things. Um, but they know that they can go in there and they can play games and people will teach them the games and they're all. They're all fine. Yeah. Um, you know, they, they, so it isn't something where people have to wander around and haven't got an idea what to do because, you know, there's always plenty of, you know, the opportunity to sit down and have a go at stuff. Yeah. Um, that's the intention anyway. Okay. So attendance figures last year? Uh, we, we believe we had around 7,000 okay. people last year. So now that's, attend that's individual people. Yeah. And attendance is in, in the 14,000 marks. Obviously, people coming for more than one day <laughs> yeah. um, add up to that. So this isn't uh, a small event anymore. No. And attendance no. figures should probably go up this year because we all, would have, yeah, yeah. all gaming events around the world 
seem to yeah. be on a an increase of the number of attendees. And certainly we seem to have a lot of you know new people contacting us not a company but there's always lots of new publishers and companies and exactly they're, they're great so they're all, they're all little guys and you know there's one of them will probably have something really amazing yeah you know um you know there's always, always someone there's lots of stuff that you come along and you think okay maybe this is a your you know your talent yes <laughs> but but then there are there are other areas where you look at and you think you know that's a really good idea that and they go on and make a you know um, a really good game out of it and so on uh, but yeah um, we attend these as well and certainly lots of contact by people we're always amazed when we go to things like I was down in London this weekend uh, for a, um, a games thing down there and we were demonstrating a game and we were talking through, uh, talking to people and the people just um, look, all of them hadn't heard it uh, one person I think had heard of that all that thing in Birmingham isn't it wow um, okay and, uh, and all the others hadn't heard of it you think okay you know, how, how much work do you have to do to just get the <laughs> to get people <laughs> so I, mean, I, 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 I really believe that you know they could be uh, the space for sort of you know, um, you know the UK could could have conventions of you know um, into the tens of that you know, you know yeah that sort of size of scale, uh, scale of things if you just think the number of people out there who are or might be willing to play these sorts of games yeah you know okay yeah. so did you ever expect it to become as big as it is now no i mean we in the early years we said to ourselves um would it be possible for a uk convention to get to five thousand right. people um and then you know we're now you know, we, we then we then started talking about ten thousand, and we you know we would, wouldn't wouldn't be surprised if we get to that you know ballpark this year okay um you know we're not necessarily setting any targets we we we, we you know um seven thousand we're hoping somewhere between eight and nine thousand or so but it would it wouldn't be a surprise if it you know nudged up towards that kind of level yeah um so um i don't know i mean we we just never we never thought it would be quite on this scale no right okay <laughs> yeah, so what's so. next then where, where do you see it going um, I think we, 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 we just keep sort of doing what we, we do, really. We sort of, you know, we, we, we try to create quite a buzz for the event. You know, we try and have a lot of updates, a lot of information going out there to, you know, to just to create a bit of a community. We, we do quite a lot through the year as well, keeping people up to date with stuff, even if it's just sort of silly cartoons and comics, <laughs> and then, you know, that we do jokes online and things, just that we keep in touch with people. But um, hopefully this will mean that the, you know, the, it'll continue to grow because I think, I think there is a, a real thirst for you know for the 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 whole games now isn't the whole hobby game world seems to be growing oh yeah i mean i'm one of these people that classes us as in a golden age and i think that the number of board game cafes cropping up around the country the popularity yeah, of, yeah. of gaming yeah. and yeah the attendance figures at uh, all events not just uk games expo but s and gen con and things like that are, are, it's definitely growing what we'd like to do is to until now it's been a matter of basically this is the space we've got um let's see what we can use it for or you know what, what we can do with it um and knowing that there are limits to what we've been what we can aim to do now that we've made this move so we are you know we've got the and you see as well as the trade hall which is it's essentially infinitely expandable <laughs> you know certainly within the scope of anything that would be um possible to think about um then you can start thinking about putting in elements of uh, all sorts of things possibly yeah. you know going forward and things and in the past we have had our uh, living dungeon uh, as we called it for a couple of years and we've done another event called living munchkin and a um uh, a laser questy type event a couple of years ago so these sort of live, live action things are quite popular uh, but it's only ever really, really possible to put a few people through it at a yeah. time because you know um so now suddenly the space becomes more possible to start thinking about doing larger versions of those yeah. things so, so for those people that don't know um the uk games expo started off at the clarendon suites in in birmingham and then was it three years ago moved to the hilton uh yes 2013 was our first year 2013 moved to the hilton and after the first year at the hilton uh, we was like okay so we've outgrown this yes yeah what do we do next <laughs> what do we do now? um and then it was like well we've, we've got to stay here for another couple of years um but but what do we do and now that we're using hall one of the nec it's like right i, I can see that now being a permanent venue because as you say we we can easily have more space within the NEC if we need to. So it, it now can grow yes. without having yeah. to look around for a new venue. And obviously what we also need, because of the nature of Expo being not just the daytime convention, but also the evening mm -hmm. activities, it's important to have you know hotels obviously in the vicinity. Obviously the NEC has 
quite a few of them but also the the, the Hilton gives us that space to have quite a lot of open gaming space in the evening yes. and for the for, for everything to carry on into the evening plus including the role playing games and um and other things so um that combination of the the hotels including a big convention hotel and and the convention space i think should work quite well um you know there's been there was some concern at, at times about you know would people move between the two the two two buildings yep. um and things and you know that's fair enough but the way we're trying to handle that is the daytime is in main, mainly in the hilton is just tournaments so these guys were stuck in their room anyway yep. no I, I it was i know it was a big challenge because i was there at the time yeah. it was announced and i i yes. was you know i i heard all of the conversations with all of the people going oh my god this is going to be a disaster this isn't going to work and i think you've done the best thing you can do in order to make it work and having now you know being one of the exhibitors in the trade hall i am not concerned Mm. in any way shape or form that people are not going to be there during the day which i think is one of the things people were were worried about so yeah hopefully it should should be all okay i think they'll be fine yes yeah yeah, so just to wrap things up on the UK Games Expo side of things, it's uh, the very start of June. If people want to know more, yeah, the website is ukgamesexpo.co.uk. Uh, if you're in the UK, as I say, you should go, or you should definitely think uh, think about going, whatever form of gaming you're in, whether you've got a family or not. And for those people not in the UK, maybe if you wanted to visit the UK. I actually know a few people who don't live in the UK who are coming over. They're timing it with a holiday, and they're planning to pop into the Games Expo while they're there yeah. so that's yeah. um so that that's good any more information you want to give people about it um just before we wrap that bit up uh no we we i mean the best thing to keep an eye on what's going on is the website you can follow links to facebook page and twitter and we have a newsletter that we send out to everyone so there'll be lots and lots of updates through that that's often the best way to to keep on top of what's what's going on we certainly quite communicative through the through social media and things yep. so um that's the way to find out cool um, things yep and now more about richard denning because as well as uk games expo you've actually done a couple of games designs and had them published yep yes i have <laughs> so. so your first one uh oh i should i should have really researched this shouldn't i i think was it fire of london was the first one you published yes it was yeah yes great 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 fire right okay yeah. i don't look like a complete yeah. idiot and you took that to Essen? Yeah, that came out in 2010. Right. Um, so that was sort of... Uh, Expo was fortunately in those days quite small. So so I was able to sort of do a certain amount of quite a bit of designing along the way. Um, it's become more difficult lately with the uh, time factors. But um, yeah, that, that, did, that did pretty well. I mean, it's a sort of game which is quite a Marmite game in the sense that some of you really don't like it at all, but other people you know, quite like it. I think... Um, but that's fine, isn't it? You don't, <laughs> you can't please everyone. Yeah, it's when you do a game that nobody likes. Nobody that, likes. That's, that's the problem. <laughs> that's that, that's the issue. Uh, but no, I went down well, and um, we actually did a reprint of it. I um, mean, um, Pandasaurus Games contacted us, and they wanted to do a print run in the states, uh, primarily to supply the you know the American side. Um, and they did a Kickstarter right. that did very well, and um, our, our sort of perfectly for the royalty payments, we got a certain number of the games, which we've we've just been selling. I think we're down to the last eight of them. Um, so. <laughs> So I'm sure they'll sell out at uh, an expo this year. Um, so yeah, Go Far went, went pretty well. And apart from that, you've got Nine Worlds. Which yeah, I is did, the latest I, one is I it? I actually did. I actually did a little a, a, a card game called Tinker Tailor that came out last year, but it was completely under the radar. And I was entirely my fault. It actually is one of those things that I, I learned so much about, about the whole thing about you know presenting games and stuff is that we made every mistake you could possibly make with Tinker Tailor. <laughs> uh, so I think that was, that was one that I'd hope at some point I might redo. Um, uh, we, we, you know, I was still. I, and it's the sort of game that people can, when they sit down and they demo it they actually quite like it um, right. quite often they'll say oh, well I'll have a copy of that and stuff but the problem is that the artwork's uh, maybe not as good as as it could be and so present, presentation wise it sort of misses people right? right and we didn't really make a splash about it didn't make any announcements about it so it's entirely our own fault and at Essen we did have an Essen this year but we were sort of facing a wall in the deepest, darkest recesses of, 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 of I think it was Hall 2. No, Hall, Hall 3, was it? Anyway, they were, wherever we were. We, oh, the um, one at the back. Yeah, the, the one, yeah. the one, uh, the one, uh, and um, which was, a uh, you know, so it didn't, didn't do, didn't help us when it came to uh, uh, that, that. But that's a little light card game, which, um, you know, uh, but that's, that was last year. But then Nine Worlds is what we're, we're working on at the moment. Um, so that's... Um, Viking sort of themed, well, Norse Viking Germanic themed game. 
um, mm-hmm. set in the nine worlds of, yep. of the Norse universe. Um, an area control game. So it's um, what we tried to go with there was a feel it was a feel almost of a of, a, of an overlap between Viking sort of or historic kind of game boardy little bit sort of play yeah. and, and, and and board games as well so the pieces we're trying to do are sort of like um you know game stones and and, and avatar pieces which are more like sort of pawns and things like chess lewis chess pawns actually is the style we're 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 working on at the moment right so nine um, worlds isn't out yet it's hoping to be well i hope to get it out actually at essen i think because right, okay. uh, one of the problems with running the expo is <laughs> i'm so yes. busy with that that it's actually quite difficult to put all the effort and time and, and then to you know trying to do a launch and all this sort of thing yeah is it possible so, for people to see it at the expo oh yeah yes yeah. So right. in fact well, i've been taking it around the country i'm actually at um um the edinburgh thing a compulsion this oh, um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, this coming weekend um, in um in, in scotland but so we've got it to we've had it around a few conventions and it's have gone down pretty well on the on the play testing and things at the at the convention so far um if you and it's very much a game of competitive play you know lots of you know it isn't a cooperative game by any means <laughs> um but it's at the expo hopefully it will be at a, a near final form right yeah, okay. that's the aim um, yeah. and somebody on the bgg guild asked about a game called great museums that they tried previously yeah, now that was a game that uh, after Great Fire 2010, um, I sp- started work on a game, um, this great museum game. Uh, got it so far after a couple of years, and actually had it as I had an author's table at at Essen. You know the little tables they have there, yeah. um, and we ran it over a few days there, and it seemed to go quite well. The problem was that. Uh, was Expo happened really? <laughs> Expo came along and was sort of uh, big and busy and getting busier and larger and everything. And we made the uh, the jump to the Hilton, of course, in 2013. And it was just every spare hour really was around about that. And it became difficult to actually get the game um, to a final form. Okay. Um, it's sort of gone through a few of the few few phases, and we I mean, we're not quite sure where we uh, well where we are with it it's, it's it's sort of on the shelf but not completely abandoned it's sort of like one that I, I, I'm definitely keen to get you know to get down and get to get done again okay. so we've just got, I've just got to go back to it and start all over again really and sort of work out the elements that worked and yeah. you know and and see where we are with that so possible one day Excellent. you know yeah Okay, so that's a little bit more about you as a as a games designer. Um, I think that's probably everything we've got time for. So just as a reminder, UK Games Expo, very start of June, at the Hilton NEC in Birmingham. Um, so if you want to know more, the website is ukgamesexpo.co.uk. And thank you very much for your time and for coming on the show. Okay, thank you. And that's about all we've got time for for this podcast. So thanks very much for listening or watching and listening if you're watching it on YouTube. Thanks again to the sponsors of the show, Games Law, and Jason Shaw at audionautics.com for the music used in this podcast. Take care, and thanks for listening.